Your phone was just in the middle of an update, and it accidentally got unplugged. It finished downloading the latest OS online, but the bad part is that you didn't realize it was unplugged for half of the time it was installing the update. You try to let it finish, but notice that your phone is off. You plug it back in, and it continues downloading. After a while, your phone powers up with the latest software. You're excited and can't wait to check out the new features. But your iPhone is somehow malfunctioning. The home screen isn't working properly, and it keeps lagging. Some of the existing apps don't work properly, and you can't access some files. In the tech world, that would mean your phone was bricked. Yeah, just an expensive brick in your hands. Firmware is software embedded in the hardware. Or software for hardware, for short. It's not like your regular software that can be transferred from device to device, or something that can be uninstalled whenever you want. Many gadgets have them, like phones, cameras, gaming consoles, routers, and computers. Each firmware is unique to each device, which is why it's very sensitive when installing. So when your device bricks, basically everything in your device that was updating got stuck midway. The firmware is only half overwritten by an external interruption and can't normally run anymore. The good news is that not all cases are the same. Some phones can be as useless as a, well, a brick, while some can be salvaged. If it's still half functioning, then there's a way to use your phone when it happens. The bad news is that a bricked device can't be fixed by normal means, which is why they always prompt you with a do not turn off device when installing message. You may be able to get away with a few seconds of a power outage, but it's better to keep your device plugged in whenever an update happens. And this applies to all devices that have firmware. Apple always has OS updates and encourages users to always back up their iPhones before updating if something like bricking happens. You can easily do that by plugging in your iPhone to your computer, opening iTunes, and clicking on Backup. Or you can always use the iCloud and other cloud services out there. That way, you'll be safe and can walk around happily with the latest firmware update. You open your drawer and find that old first-generation iPad you got when you were just a teenager. You charge it up, and it works. You're excited and saved yourself some money. You have your old account running, and it still works. So you go to the App Store and discover that you don't even have some of the essentials, like Netflix, Facebook, or Instagram. You try downloading them, but there's some error. These apps aren't compatible with your device, so you can't install them. Before sliding it back in the drawer to collect more dust, you figure something out. To download any new apps on an old OS in Apple, you have to have an existing account on a new iOS device. This doesn't work on Macs. If you already have an existing account on a new iPhone or iPad, you have to log in to those credentials on the old iPad. Once you do it, open your apps, and you can see a list of all your downloaded apps that are present on your phone. So you're not downloading them from the App Store, but rather downloading them from your app list. Now you can enjoy all the new apps on the old device. If you're feeling nostalgic, you can even download an old gaming console emulator on your Android device. It will allow you to play the old games you loved when you were younger. Still, be cautious about where you download apps. Any app downloaded outside the App Store or Google Play Store can contain viruses or malware that might damage your device. It's possible to have two messaging apps on your Android phone that supports dual SIM cards. Each brand of Androids has different names for it, but you can generally find the way to do it by opening settings and searching for dual apps, clone apps, twin apps, or dual messenger. Once you activate it, you can open a new messenger app for your new contacts on the new SIM card. Taking care of your phones is vital. If you have an OLED or AMOLED display on your phone, you can significantly save a lot of battery life by applying dark mode on the system and the running apps. On the other hand, LCD screens light up your phone with a backlight that's always on even if your phone doesn't have high brightness. AMOLED or OLED displays activate each pixel to produce light. So by having your phone on dark mode, fewer pixels are lit, which makes you save battery. And to push it into a higher gear, you can ditch your home and lock screen picture of your dog and opt for a plain black image. That way, when you unlock your phone and use it, 
you'll barely consume any battery life. Sometimes you get kind of bored with the same interface all the time. If you own an Android phone, you can easily download a new launcher and change the entire setup of your phone. Eh, don't worry, it'll save all your data and keep your settings as is. You can download many types of launchers to suit your needs. If you want fewer distractions on your phone, you can get a launcher that minimizes everything from settings to homepage and just lets you use the apps that are essential to what you need. It can hide some social media apps that always distract you whenever you're working or doing something important. And just like there are launchers that minimize your interface, there are some that bring out the best of it. You can install a launcher that shows details of your phone's performance and redesign the whole thing to look attractive. Best of all, you can switch back to your original launcher whenever you want. You can properly multitask if you're using an Android phone or tablet. The option can open three different apps at once. So, if you're watching an intense video and someone messages you, then you can split screen it at the top and bottom to enjoy the video and type back. And if you need to read a quick email, you can easily pop that one in and have the video playing, chatting with your friend, and your email open simultaneously. There's a hidden folder in settings for the Samsung users out there that allows you to access new options to customize your phone. Go to the settings option and tap on the about device or about phone. Scroll down a bit until you see build number. Tap that button seven times. After you've done that, you'll have to enter your PIN or password and activate the developer options. Congratulations, you're now a developer. With this option, you can set up a mock location anywhere around the world. Just download a third-party app that pins you anywhere around the world. If you are in New York and want to appear like you're in Paris, run the app and pick a place you want to be. Your GPS will now show you the roads, traffic, and other things happening around you. You just got yourself the latest phone on the market with more than 100 megapixels. You're snapping all kinds of pictures with every different setting. But when you look through the pictures and compare them to your friend's phone, you realize that your images aren't as good as theirs, even though her phone's camera is around 64 megapixels. Many phone companies like to market in bold, highest megapixels on the phone in the market today. But megapixels are only a measurement of image size rather than quality. So even if you have a very high megapixel count, you're still gonna have an average image quality if the sensor on your phone is weak. The one cool thing you can do is print the image on a large billboard for such a high megapixel count, but it won't have the color, depth, contrast, saturation, detail, and other things that make an image good. So good sensor processing is the key. Many DSLR cameras don't have that many megapixels. They're low compared to smartphones these days, but their sensors are far more superior. Both modern smartphones and DSLRs can have the option of manually selecting the settings to get the best image quality. But in the end, the DSLR wins.